Today we are going to start the self-powering heater project uh, but first we need to tidy up well, at least one of these workbenches so we've got a space to do things. Um, people always ask me why, oh why don't you sell the, the heaters that you finish making videos of? Because I still like to actually like fuck around with them in the workshop by myself and break them. Like, uh, do you know what happens when you wire up the DC motor around the wrong way and give it the full 10 amps of the power supply? Yeah, smoke comes out and it stops working. But hey, if you've got more heaters, all you do is you take one apart and take a motor out of it. Anyway, I digress. Let's clean the bench and then we will talk about what we are going to do. Right, we are tidied up again. I have coffee, which is always good for thinking when we're about to start thinking about things. So I've chosen the most, well, I want to say standard here I've got. It's not really standard anymore because we've added probes and things to it. Hold on, let me just tell my phone to shut up for an hour. Be quiet for an hour, please. Thank you. Goodbye. All right. So bog standard here with the bog standard controls that we can adjust the fueling because I imagine we'll end up adding restrictions to the exhaust. So we'll need to adjust the fueling to match. With this heater, it means we can use the probe straight in the burn chamber to make sure we're not getting an oscillating uh, burn chamber temperature, temperature, which means the fuel's wrong, again, allowing us to adjust for more temperature. We've got the other probe that we can sort of jam on the heater body and see what the body temperature is. Being on the nice uh, test bench that Greg from Lavender uh, gave us, we can uh, move it about as we require it if we need more space round about it. It also means we can just have the air intake and exhaust coming out the bottom and I'll have it over here and see I've already wrapped it in insulation so we'll just be able to attach whatever we make on at the end of the exhaust and test it there. Which brings us to the components. Let me uh, adjust the camera for a better view. So David, eh, another David, not this David, a different David has sent us in the basic core elements that we'll need to test this setup. He has sent us three, wait, let me try to show it, there we go, he sent us the three um, thermoelectric generator modules. They are currently taped onto this water block so that I can't get them the wrong way around. And we just uh, uh, series them up to get the voltage out that we want. Am I even shot? Yes, we are now. Let's go. Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. We'll join them up properly when it comes to it. He also, as you can see, attached to these thermoelectric generators is a cooling block. So we have already a cooling solution to get the cool side cool. He also sent a voltage uh, regulator, well, kind of a boost and buck converter. So no, mo no matter what varying voltages we put in, we can adjust it to get a stable output and, well, it'll give us varying current. So that'll actually let us see if we can get 14 volts and maybe, I don't know, a couple of amps out of it. Maybe, we'll see. I don't know. This is all part of the process. So we've got block, we've got power. He sent us a bit of hose as well for joining it to things. And a big tube of thermal grease that we'll need when we make our interface between the exhaust and the thermoelectric generators. Uh, back to cooling. So we've got a water cooling block and I thought we would use the Bobble Vans uh, water heater but use it backwards we'll put it on the front of the heater so it draws air in through the two radiators cooling the water down and also slightly preheating the air going into the heater which we'll see if it has any detrimental effect to the running of here because it's well, we've got a water pump here we just have to attach it to our water blocks and then we've got our We've got our cooling solution already done and made. Pop that front of the heater, 12 volts into the pump, and away she goes. We've got the cooling side sorted out. So this is my plan for this series of videos. This is video one. There's not going to be a lot of action in this one. This is where we think about things, and I'm going to run this series as a video every two weeks, which will let me make a video post up and then get like a week and a bit's worth of comments in and suggestions still allowing me time to buy things and make things for the next video dependent on suggestions so here is my thinking so far 
So you can use this video as an opportunity to post your own thoughts and your thoughts on my thoughts. My thought is, what we do is, we take the diameter of the exhaust size, we'll just call it diameter uh, D, how about diameter D, there we go, that size, and we convert that to a rectangle. So we take that area and we work out how much that area is in a rectangle and build a thin flat exhaust out of, I'm thinking, uh, 3mm aluminium. I'll need to order more, these ones aren't quite big enough. So if we build basically a box out of aluminium, so that gives us good thermal conductivity. I know aluminium isn't the best choice for the exhaust, but for the purpose of testing and the, to see if it works, we could build it out of aluminium. Ha! Huh, and I get to try to weld aluminium. God, I fucking hate welding aluminium. But hey, more practice, more better. So we'll make a box. I'm thinking if we do the inside of the box, I'll just make this bigger for exaggeration. So if we have our exhaust coming in at this end, oh, that I'll need to build a manifold to make a shape and then join on our exhaust. But if we come in, and I don't know, perhaps we could have a uh, welder on the bottom, some kind of baffling to kind of slow the exhaust down as it travels its convoluted route now through the exhaust and out the other side and then possibly into another silencer with uh, possibly the big black uh, silencer with a bit more restriction because people in other videos haven't, well they don't stop fair to them but they don't understand that it's not an engine, it's, it doesn't, in an engine you want some back pressure, well a natural but you want some back pressure for exhaust scavenging. But in the heater, if we add back pressure in, all it does is it keeps the gas in the heater longer and therefore it can impart more heat into the heater body, or in our case the heater body, and hopefully into the heat sink that we'll be building, oh it is technically a heat sink, for the thermoelectric generator to sit on top of and try and get as much heat into that before it exhausts out the exhaust port and away into outer space. So we can get that, so that's kind of my design is just basically, oh, I need a space. Any space? Mm -hmm. Scrub that. I don't know, a really thin sort of exhaust we'll have built. And obviously at the other end, it'll need to manifold out into like a manifold shaped size with a pipe on the end, like that. And it'll be the same on that side, it'll have a shaped part and we'll have a pipe in that end for the inlet and the exhaust and then we'll put the tags on here and oh okay so here's a question for you what do we use for insulation on the other side of the exhaust because obviously one side is going to be going to have the thermoelectric generators on it and the other side is going to be open to free air and we want to keep as much heat inside the exhaust as we can. So what is the best insulation? Well, no, not the best insulation. What insulation can we afford to use uh, for the backing and probably for the manifolds? Well, the inlet at the end of the manifold and a little bit of outlet so we can keep as much heat in there as possible. And uh, I think that's it in my theory. That's all I've got so far. That's I'm going to try and build a little exhaust manifold that oh, we can sit on that or set that on it I know, maybe uh, we also need to come up with some way of uh, clamping it and securing it because these are uh, ceramic. This isn't just white plastic, this is uh, actual a ceramic. So we can't squash them, we can't, uh, they must be flat and parallel because otherwise they'll crack. Or it's near as flat and parallel. Basically, if we, we can't apply too much force to them, I was thinking some sort of spring clips or something to try and mitigate any gaps forming and also still apply pressure without cracking them and ruining them. I think that's it. I've got the power A control out bit, bit to see if we can charge the battery. The tags themselves and a water block to do the cooling. We've got the uh, bubble vans water heater backwards. We're at the wrong end of the heater so we're pulling cool air in through to cool the water and we'll have to build a manifold 
I bet it's Alan's. Bit of pipe going outside. I think that means we're just about ready to start uh, putting things together. So I will now leave you to leave your comments, thoughts, suggestions and anything else down in the comments below. It will give me a week of reading them and bringing them in and then that week after that I can start building and putting all the bits together and then I'll make the video and then we'll publish the next stage and we will go from there and I will use your feedback to help further uh, progress all of this stuff. I can hear a small person outside. Uh, I think that's it, so, as I say, comments, suggestions, everything down below. We'll try and make this as much a community project as we can, as best we can, and get uh, all the good ideas involved and tell me where I've got or where we're going wrong. And I'm not expecting, this isn't, oh, that was another point I had to make. Uh, when David first posted this on another uh, platform or channel or whatever, you got all the comments about, oh, you can't make out more power than you put in. We're not creating over unity. We are literally burning a fuel here to make heat. <laughs> that is where the energy is coming from. The energy is coming from burning fuel. We're just trying to reclaim some of the lost energy uh, and put it back into electrical energy to help charge the batteries. We're not creating power from nowhere. It's not It's not magic. It's <laughs> I was... Oh, I was impressed and people said, oh, yeah, that's over unity. No, 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 that's, we're literally burning fuel to get, <laughs> to get energy. Uh, that was cracks me up. Uh, anyway, uh, please, please, please help or something. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching.